coming up on the next 24 News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Marcus Haroon. Welcome to 24 News. Today is Memorial Day. And coming up next, we're going to have information on a lot of people that were found, some for better and some for worse. 14-year-old Amber Snyder has been missing since last week. She has been found, but also a boy in Enfield that was lost in the Connecticut River. He was found, but he's dead. We'll also have some more information on uh, some other people that were found. An elderly man was also found. He is okay right now. We'll also have your weather coming up, right? Yeah, you can see that your Memorial Day today is pretty nice. There's a chance of a shower or two this afternoon, but cooling temperatures will be moving your way later in the week. Thanks, Clem. We'll also have some weird news coming up. Uh, many people say that they won't be able to survive the driver's test again. We'll have information on that and your sports action coming up on 24 News. 24 News at 8 p.m. starts right now. Now, from WMMH-TV headquarters in Hamden, Connecticut... With all your news in one place, this is the all-new 24 News at 8 p.m. Reporting tonight is Marcus Haroon. Colleen Joyce has your 24 forecast. And Brad McRoberts with your sports action. 24 News starts right now. Hello everyone, I'm Marcus Maroon. And I'm Colleen Joyce. Happy Memorial Day everyone. Today's May 28, 2007. Going to get to your top stories in just a second, but uh, we just want to tell everyone that we do have some special Memorial Day covered coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Quinnipiac University hosted a special event for students to learn about veterans. We'll have that coming up, but for right now we're going to start with your top headlines. 14-year-old Amber Snyder was lost early last week, but now she is safe and sound at home. Police suspected that Snyder was with a 24-year-old Vito DeVito of Middletown. Police stalked out DeVito's job where he arrived. He admitted to police that the girl was staying with him at a boarding house in Hartford. DeVito was arrested for risk of injury to a minor. Body was found body was spotted floating in the water near the Glastonbury Marina around 8.30 Saturday morning. The boater who made the grisly discovery actually helped, uh, helped to tow the body to shore where volunteer firefighters took over. Police say the, con the condition of the body indicated, indicates um, that the, it has been in the water for some time. Quote, at this time all we know is that it is a male. We don't know its age or his identity, said Lieutenant Dennis Weschner of Glastonbury Police Department. Police worked quickly to block off the area so that uh, participants in the regatta race at the marina were not um, privy to the investigation. The state medical examiner, examiner's office is condu conducting an autopsy to determine the cause of death. Um, the circumstances surrounding the discovery of the body that was found. Thank you, Colleen. We do have some information on another body that was found yesterday in the shallow waters of Connecticut River in Enfield. has been positively identified as the chief state medical examiner as 13-year-old Stephanos Rodriguez. 24 News has been continuing coverage on this since early last week when he was reported uh, last Wednesday the police began an intense search of the river after a friend of the team told Rodriguez fell out of the canoe into the river dive teams were not searching the area the body was found in and it was in fact members of the fire department that spotted the body floating four in the four feet waters near the banks of the river the cause of death had not been ruled and had been ruled as an accidental drowning Good news out of Meriden, where the family of a missing elderly man says their loved one has been found. The family says 81-year-old John Arferi was found Saturday morning and is, app 
apparently safe and sound. According to police, a ferry was last seen Friday morning driving his white Isuzu pickup truck. Right now, there is no word on where Alfieri uh, was found or details surrounding the uh, incident. Thank you, Colin. We will have some more top stories and national news coming up in just a few minutes after the next break. But we will have our Memorial Day coverage right now. Memorial Day this year, the it's the last Monday in May, and this last Monday in May was uh, today. Friday, there's a special Veterans Awareness Day for students across Connecticut. Quinnipiac University hosted this event, and I was there with this special report. It is a bit quieter out here at the Quinnipiac campus here in Hamden, Connecticut, because classes have gotten out. But inside this building, Alumni Hall, there's a lot of learning going on for Memorial Day. Good morning, everyone. Well done. I want to welcome you to what has now become a tradition here in Hamden, our seventh annual Veterans Awareness Day. Students from across Connecticut started off Friday morning with a special Veterans Awareness Ceremony. After a few opening notes, the colors were posted, the Pledge of Allegiance was said, and Melissa Boyle of Hamden High School Class of 2010 sang the National Anthem. A commander of the U.S. Army presented the invocation and a moment of silence. We come together today for awareness and remembrance. As we walk around the assembly hall, we become aware that freedom does not come easy. We become aware that great sacrifices were made. With this awareness, let us all give thanks. Lastly, Mr. Levy Hamden Middle School teacher and also the MC of this event had some closing notes before they were off to learn more about the veterans up close and personal. But freedom isn't free. And I want all of our students here to remember that. Memorial Day is a gift to all Americans. The gift is our freedom and our rights. This gift has been purchased at tremendous cost and given to you by all of our veterans, all of the veterans who have served this great nation. I want you to remember that that gift is the most precious gift in the world today. Feel free. Stand up. And they're off. The students were allowed to walk around this auditorium. Each veteran had their own table where they had out many different displays where they spoke about many different things about when they served in the war. The citation he got in World War II when it was at the Battle of Okinawa, which was one of the largest final battles of the war with Japan. And have you ever heard of suicide planes? Okay. The suicide planes were attacking these ships. His ship, which is here somewhere, right there, the USS Ridenauer, the gun he was firing with eight other people was hit direct on by a suicide plane. This was all very real. The stories are real, the people are real, and the artifacts are real. Like this rifle that was used in the Korean War. And these troops from Germany. Students are fascinated to learn about their great stories. The troops were off cane work. Sugar cane. 
he beat them, got killed, and they walked out. Nobody will lead them. Yeah. That's the reason. So what happened? Pardon? What happened? Oh, yeah. They got all rotten. They walked out. They met, they, I'm not sure, but they claim they lost their color. They never reformed any. Uh, you can't really blame something you probably won't believe. If I was to ask you, you study World War II. Do you study World War II? You know when it started? That day was December 8th. That is a holy day in the Catholic Church. It's the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Now why am I telling you this? Four years later, airplane, bomb, and holy day. The bomb was the B-29. The bomb was the atomic bomb. They dropped the bomb in Japan on the 6th of August, the 9th of August. President Truman said he would be quiet, but tomorrow we will bomb the heck out of it. Now, we didn't have a third bomb, but they didn't know that. Right? They surrendered on August 15th. Which in the Catholic Church is the feast of the, of the Assumption. So a bomber, bombs, and the Holy Day started it. Bombers, bomb, and the Holy Day ended it. Now, that was, this was the biggest bluff of the war. You heard it here just as the students did. An Army veteran tells you exactly what happened and secrets about the war that he had been in many years ago. In the olden days, they had a buck-handled knife. A buck-handled knife. And they would put it in front of the next deal. So now when the game is over, you look at the, the thing, the buck stops here. It's my deal. Now, if you didn't want the deal, you could pass the buck. Well, here are those two turns. The buck stops here, pass him the buck. So I know Truman, President Truman was a gambler. The buck stops here. means that he was just, he just got his wing. And but every time he made a turn, he would lose a couple of hundred feet. And I kept telling him, pull the stick back, Lieutenant, you're going to hit the ground. And finally he told me to mind my own damn business. Every time he turned the spur, he go around and come back, uh, the plane went down and he hit the air buckle mountains in Oklahoma. And the plane broke in two, and uh, I went over to Colt Pilot to get out the window, because it was buried in the ground, and uh, I lost two guys. So could you tell me about um, some of the things that you learned? Uh, you said that you went in Florida for, to school? Yes. I lived in a hotel for 10 weeks, ate meals in a restaurant, didn't have to make the bed, didn't have to wash any dishes, and I went back to Pumpkin Field in Mobile, Alabama, where I was assigned to the 26th Air Depot Group. We left the uh, United States on September 17, 1942, 41 days at sea around the Cape, Cape Town, South Africa, back up the Red Sea at the Suez. Hi, I'm Dippin' John. I just came out of the Veterans Affairs building, and I've got to say I learned a lot, and I'm really grateful that this event occurred, because I got to talk with a lot of the veterans, and it won't be long before a lot of the World War II veterans and Korean veterans get old, and it was really nice to share their experiences. Uh, um, they're really grateful that they got a chance to talk with us, and I hope I get to do it again next year. Men and women from all over came to teach all these different students about their life experiences, like this nurse that helped out the Red Cross. I spoke exclusively with Mayor Henrici, and he said that the thing that students should take back most is a respect for the veterans that fought for their freedom. As you've heard, those veterans have went through a lot, and I think everyone learned a lot too.
From the Quinnipiac campus, I'm Marcus Roon, 24 News. Another hot day on tap, though not as warm as Friday. Still dry, though, as we get through the holiday weekend. We add the chance of some showers, um, some on Monday. Not enough to cancel the barbecues over, um, but keep an eye on the sky. Um, but for Monday, there's a chance of some afternoon showers. Um, it'll be about 70 degrees. Uh, Tuesday, sunny, highs in the 80s. Um, we'll have more of your weather coming up soon for the rest of your week. And through the cooler temperatures that are moving to the states, across New England, I'll have that for you coming up. Thanks, Colin, for that weather update. We will have some more weather to let you know how the rest of the Memorial Day will be. But we will be right back here on 24 News at 8 p.m. Stay with us. We'll be right back.